Watch this video till the end for all the dermatology previous year questions of AIMS May 2020 session. I know time is very very important that's the reason why I advise you to watch it at uh, 1.5 or 2x and also I will provide timestamps for all the individual questions for your convenience. My name is Dr. Madhuri Shinvas. I teach dermatology for Indian PG aspirants. And these MCQs are very very important not only for INSET but also for NEET, PG and also for FMG. So watch this video till the end. And if you wish that this could be available as a PDF version, type PDF in the comment section. And for more of these type of videos, type hashtag DIRMST in the comment section. The links for the total versions of these May and November 2019 questions are there in the description. These were the questions for your reference. So now let us start May 2020 exam questions. So these are the actual questions which were asked. So which of the following is a topical antifungal, topical antifungal drug with both antipruritic as well as anti-inflammatory action, antipruritic as well as anti-inflammatory action and yes the answer is option C, sertaconazole, sertaconazole. So this is basically a dermatopharmacology MCQ, we can say integration between dermatology and pharmacology. As you can see this is the mechanism of action of the antifungal agents and as you can see ultimate, our ultimate goal is going to destroy the fungus by either acting uh, by uh, destroying its protein synthesis mechanism or by damaging its cell wall synthesis and here in this case azole group of medications are going to act uh, by inhibiting protein alpha demethylase because of which the fungal cell wall formation is going to be disrupted so i hope this is known for all of you so that is not a big deal this is dealt in detail in pharmacology but what is that which I, I am concerned with this question is regarding this property that is anti-inflammatory properties anti-inflammatory properties are because of the inhibition of certain cytokines in the skin by these antifungal medications so apart from antifungal properties certain of these topical antifungals also do have anti-inflammatory properties so what are all those things? So you can see, yes, cyclopyroxolamine, butaconazole, fluconazole, miconazole. So and along with that, sertoconazole. So all of these have anti-inflammatory properties. And you can see here, along with these, sertoconazole is additionally having a property of reduction of the pruritus. So this was taken from one article, but uh, I have found that, yes, in Fitzpatrick, which is a standard textbook of dermatology you can notice that cetoconazole is additionally attributed to have anti-inflammatory properties even antibacterial properties and as you can notice anti-pruritic properties so that is the reason why cetoconazole is the answer for this question and i want uh, all of you to make a note of this meconazole 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 has one very interesting property along with antifungal activity this is also having anti-neoplastic activity. So make a note of this. And also if you have observed serotoconazole, even I have uh, uh, you know highlighted it has antibacterial property. Though it is a fungicidal, that is antifungal agent, it also has an antibacterial property. So please make a note of this because AIMS is very notorious for uh, you know asking the next step. It always tries to level up in the upcoming exams. And this is a very straightforward question, uh, again a uh, dermatopharmacology integrated question, Aplasia cutis. Aplasia cutis is the development of the skin over certain parts of the body is going to be hampered because of which there will be absence of this uh, cutaneous tissue and most likely Aplasia cutis well, will manifest over the scalp if at all this uh, you know can be asked as an image based question then they will give a picture of the scalp whereby there is a patchy uh, you know hair loss uh, uh, area over the scalp and the answer for this question is yes if you have marked carbamazole as the answer you are absolutely right so basically not just the carbamazole but yes methimazole carbamazole and even misoprostol so this could be even a gynecology Obs, obscanic uh, and 
uh, dermatology integration can also be expected uh, in these types of questions so this was a question which was you know repeated so many times uh, and this is a very very important question so the question reads something like this a patient presents with fever and joint pain joint pain for which she was put on nsaid after 10 days the patient has developed the following skin lesion and what is the skin lesion you are able to notice some hyperpigmentation which is present over the nose so what is the diagnosis so this was asked in may 2019 and also june 2020 so this is a very important question and i hope you might have already known this answer yes it is chikungunya and in fact this hyperpigmentation which you are able to see over the nose in these patients it is called as it is given a name called as chick sign it is given a name called as chick sign so now i can see some students are uh, thinking why sir why is it not fixed drug eruption see basically the name itself uh, says everything fixed drug eruption so the these patients after the intake of certain drugs like for example ansets or cotrimoxazole they are going to develop a eruption and this eruption could be you know fluid filled vesicles or bullous lesions or it could be just a faint erythema but ultimately all these lesions are going to heal with a hyperpigmentation so this thing will be there and this component fixed component is also important why because these patient the history will definitely mention that yes the patient previously took the same medication and he developed hyperpigmentation at the same site okay so that uh, that is what is uh, the meaning of fixed so our uh, intake of certain drug is going to produce a eruption at this uh, you know particular place which is going to be fixed and the this medication if it is taken again the patient is going to again develop the same kind of lesion at the same site so that is the reason for this name fde fixed drug eruption but if you observe the question does not mention anything regarding the past that is the patient took the same ansaid medication and developed the same uh, hyperpigmentation previously and again uh, redevelop the same pigmentation again now that is not given and also for uh, for your uh, you know knowledge ansaids are going to produce a fixed drug eruption over the lips and as i told you cotrimoxazole cotrimoxazole which is another drug which is also important to cause fd it is going to produce hyperpigmentation over the genitals hyperpigmentation over the genitals okay and so that is the reason why it is chikungunya which is answer and few students think about melasma why is it not melasma because this particular history does not have any sense whatsoever uh, and it has no connection with melasma second point melasma is going to produce symmetrical hyperpigmentation over the cheeks so that is also not given in the history or it is not given in the image as well and also this particular history of fever and joint pain which is very very common in the patients of chikungunya for which the patient might have taken ansaids is going to correlate uh, very nicely with the mcq with the image and with the answer okay so that is the reason why chikungunya is the answer and for your uh, in knowledge fixed drug eruption is an example of type 4 hypersensitivity reaction not only that any kind of a drug rash which a pa any patient gets is because of a type 4 hypersensitivity reaction this is very very important for you to remember and this is also another point fd always and always heals with the hyperpigmentation so this you can see uh, is the fd over the lips and if you remember we have seen uh, mcq in the uh, in uh, previous videos related to morbiliform eruption is seen in all of the following except and if you remember the answer there was shingles and if you remember one of the options was uh, Uh, you know dengue rubella measles and not only that even chikungunya can also produce morbiliform eruption so this could be a possible potential future mcq so please make a note of this so now let us move on to the next question so there is a lot of detail which can be discussed but yes we will move on to the next question which drug causes flagellate pigmentation of the skin among the given options and yes it is bleomycin very 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 important as if you know 
uh, we hit the patients uh, any person with a whip how they uh, you know uh, uh, pigmentation can be noted how the changes or the skin can be noted just like that uh, this is described as flagellate pigmentation just like that the medication the anti cancer medication bleomycin is going to produce this kind of a pigmentation so this is very very important question initially the patients are going to have a flagellate erythema but ultimately this uh, uh, is going to heal with the pigmentation so that's what you need to remember this is uh, we can say a memory based uh, question related to again pharmacology so now let us move on to the next question and here it is a patient comes with linear lesions and subcutaneous lymphatic spread as shown in the image below what is the most probable diagnosis so yes if you have marked the answer as sporotrichosis you are absolutely right and the linear fashion of these lesions uh, which the patients are developing because of the lymphatic involvement it is called as sporotrichoid distribution sporotrichoid distribution and sporotrichoid distribution is classical for sporotrichosis which is produced by sporotrich shinki and at the inoculation site there is going to be a initial nodule development but because of the lymphatic spread of this sporotrich shinki uh, there is going to be the involvement of the lymphatics and lymphatics are linear uh, in arrangement so in a linear fashion we can see over the skin development of erythematous nodules which will slowly progress on to involve more and more proximal part of the body and this sporo this uh, this is also called as rose gardner's disease most likely because the prick of a, a thorn is going to produce this condition and what else are the important points yeah and uh, i will just try to vanish myself and if you observe carefully this this satellite this satellite i kept here for one reason can anyone tell me what is the reason for me to put this satellite image here if you know and also there is one very important histopathological finding in the case of sporotrichosis if you know the answer for that uh, histopathological finding please please type your answer in the comment section below and this sporotrichoid pattern is not just uh, a, cl a classical of sporotrichosis this can also be seen in fish tank granuloma which is also called as swimming pool granuloma and it can also be seen in lupus vulgaris so uh, if you know the causative organism of fish tank granuloma and lupus vulgaris please type your answer in the comment section below and this is the next question a young female came with complaints of bizarre shaped lesions on the face overnight overnight so this was the question and this was the picture of uh, this picture might not be the exact one but yes with this history of bizarre shaped lesions which are developing overnight uh, over uh, the body the diagnosis which you must think about is dermatitis artifacta so basically uh, this is not a proper dermatological condition we can say this is a combination of again psychiatry and dermatology integration so why because usually it is observed that certain uh, females who are having hysterical uh, you know uh, episodes they can uh, develop these kind of artificial lesions which are produced by themselves physically over the body it is not due to any inherent internal uh, pathogenesis but it is due to the inflict ing of the injuries by the patients themselves due to the underlying hysterical issues okay that is the reason why this is called as artifact because they are actually produced artificially so no uh, di uh, disease or etiopathogenesis can explain the onset of these lesions or the evolution of these lesions okay and i hope you remember this movie conjuring uh, where she you know develop certain kinds of lesions over the body overnight by the time uh, 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 the night is uh, completed at the end of uh, by the uh, early morning she develops certain bizarre lesions over her body and we can uh, you know in this movie it was shown as a ghost produced those lesions but no it is actually in the real sense it is 
Dermat rate is artifact. Okay. So as you can notice here, uh, the, these are the uh, you know disorders with uh, integration of the dermatology and psychiatry, and among them factitious skin diseases like dermatitis artifacta, dermatitis simulata, and passivata are important conditions. And we have seen artifacta already here. So bizarre shape relations in hysterical women. Now let us you know see what is dermatitis simulata. Simulata is these patients are knowingly they are knowingly going to put on a makeup which will mimic some dermatological condition. So this is called as dermatitis simulata. And in the case of dermatitis passivata, because of the you know passive nature of these patients, they uh, we are going to feel that these patients are having some kind of a dermatological condition this is called as dermatitis passivator and you can see this is the, a patient who is having dermatitis passivator because you know uh, she actually had a breast lump because of which she felt that she is going to die then she suddenly stopped taking personal uh, you know hygiene uh, uh, in, in a true sense she just left uh, and felt that it is end of her life so she did not uh, 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 receive a proper hygiene for herself because of which uh, the skin it uh, collected over the face in the form of a carpace carpace and forming a mass and uh, by simple measure of you know putting saline gauzes this was uh, removed very easily and you can see the before and after pictures this was before and this was after this saline gauzes were put this was taken from one of the articles Okay, so now let us, you know, see uh, the next question. A two-day year old newborn girl born out of non-consanguous, uh, you know, marriage was evaluated for tense blister and areas of denuded skin. Denuded skin is erosions that had been present since birth. The child develops there. Uh, the child develops there while mother handles her for bathing and feeding. So wherever the uh, you know pressure sites of the body are developing these kind of erosions. And there is one more history. The sibling of the child also had history of developing similar lesions which proved to be fatal in 10 days. So with all these clues, if you have marked the answer as congenital epidermolysis bullosa, then you are absolutely right. Why? Because as you can notice, that there is a similar history in the sibling of this two day old newborn girl. So, siblings are affected. So, we can think of either genetic or infectious conditions. Okay. So, in the case of this question, let us, you know, be restricted to genetic. Why? Because it is also mentioned that yes, there is development of tense blisters at the you know sites wherever there is a history of handling that is pressure. That is, these are called as mechanobullous, mechanobullous disorders. Wherever there is a possible you know handling of the caretaker or mother. Uh, at those pressure sites, the de development of the blisters is happening, and also they are rupturing to form erosions. So these are the example. This is an example of a mechanobullous disorder, and it is epidermolysis bullosa, which is the answer here. And yes, there is one triad. If you see, there is the option congenital syphilis in the early congenital syphilis. In the early congenital syphilis, congenital syphilis. There is a triad of rhinitis, uh, hepatosplenomegaly, and most importantly, uh, syphilitic femphigus. That is the vesiculobullous lesions over the palms and soles. So this is the triad which can be seen in early congenital syphilis. And I uh, want to ask you one question. What is the name of the triad which can be seen in the late congenital syphilis? If you know the answer for this question, please leave your answer in the comment section below. And these are all the uh, you know types of epidermolysis bullosa for your uh, you know quick revision. I have kept it here, and this is the picture of a congenital syphilis child. So this is the next question in cosmetics methyl isothiazolinone MIT. It is uh, you know called in short 
is used as and if you have marked the answer as preservative or you are absolutely right so few points about other options why because there is a possibility they uh, they can be the next questions so what are the detergents detergents are nothing but they are the surfactant surfactant so uh, uh, this much is enough for you and methyl isothiazole you know, was actually used as a preservative very very commonly earlier but what happened was it was used left and right in cosmetics uh, this lotion that moisturizer this shampoo that sunscreen in all of them it was used and finally what was uh, you know found out that it was having certain patients developing acd allergic contact dermatitis so ultimately this was you know uh, taken back from the market this is no more used as a preservative in uh, uh, these skin care products so these are all the preservatives they are going to ha have certain kind of antibacterial antifungal properties because of which there will not be any development uh, you know growth of these unnecessary germs in the dermatological products so these are all the examples for that and you can see mit is present here sodium benzoid parabens and edta these are the ones which you can remember no you don't try to memorize all of them and emulsifiers these are basically uh, fatty alcohols which are going to help two different liquids to mix with each other so that much you if you know that will be enough and what is a vehicle it is just that component uh, in a skincare product which is going to release the active ingredients onto the skin okay includes all the constituents of the formulation apart from the active ingredients so like for example if we prescribe a patient with topical steroids then the that cream is not going to have complete uh, you know only topical steroids it will have certain other molecules also which are nothing but the vehicles and this is the last question a female patient presents with active genital warts so diagnosis is already mentioned in the question and there is also history of you know recurrence but her husband does not have it okay so husband does not have any uh, warts what is the advice you will give to the to prevent the transmission and among the given options if you have marked the answer as option d that is do not involve in sexual intercourse when active lesions are present then you are absolutely right and i want the students who are watching this video to answer this question genital warts are produced by which virus what is that virus which will produce the genital warts uh okay so that is your question please type your answer in the comment so if you look at the options option a says give continuous prophylactic antivirals to the patient option b says give prophylactic antivirals to husband give antivirals whenever active lesions are present so all these uh, options are telling antiviral should be given but please remember in the case of the warts there are no antivirals uh, which are actually available right now all that we can prescribe these patients is topical immunomodulators topical immunomodulators okay so here you can notice very very uh, important point no oral medications are available for the what and yes the in a uh, non pregnant wom uh, woman and in Uh, 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 and in a pregnant woman the you know disease treatment management approach is going to be different so in a non pregnant uh, you know individual we can use podophilin or amiquamon whereas if it is a pregnant woman then our approach is going to be different we cannot use these by because they uh, they are going to have teratogenicity which is going to destroy the fetus so uh, we are going to use either trichloroacetic acid application or cryotherapy as an alternative to imiquimod or podophilin and it is cryotherapy which is more preferred in a pregnant woman having the genital warts okay this is it for this session friends i hope all of you enjoyed this video if this was helpful please do hit that like button so that i will get motivated to make these kind of sessions on a daily basis and if you are not at a part of my telegram group the links are there in the description below and please do hit that red subscribe button and convert it into a white subscribe button why because white is peace 
This is my telegram channel and you can notice a best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The second best time is now. So analogous to that, the best time to start with grand test was 60 days before the exam. But the second best time is now. So if you are not at giving grand test, I would beg you to please give the grand test, do a review the mistakes which you are making and most importantly continue the revision of uh, you know all the notes which you have previously read. So these are the most important things at this point and the link for this telegram group is there in the description you can uh, click that and you can join that. And most importantly, believing yourself is important. So write down your name in the comment section and take this pledge. At the end of this class, you are going to give the best and you are going to get a good rank and a branch and state of your choice, which you very, very much deserve. And your success is your responsibility. Okay, please remember this. Thank you so much. Do share this among your friends. Do like this video and do subscribe to my YouTube channel. Myself, Dr. Madhya Shinva signing off. Happy learning. Sarvam Sri Krishna Param Sarvejana Sukhino Bhavantu.